great. Let me see if I can brighten this a little bit more. There we go. All right, what's good, y'all? It's Kachu and Yenika. I am a ultra saxophonist, multi instrumentalist, and recording artist based in the Philadelphia music scene. So, you know, if you're interested in checking out my content, following my journey, subscribe to my channel. So, pretty much what I'm doing here is I like to every now and then give you guys some game. You know what I'm saying? And um, announce some things, you know, I'm doing in the Philadelphia area. But for the most part, I do like to give you guys game on just like artist related stuff. You know, a lot, I know a lot of you guys who are chasing music. You know, a lot of you guys who watch my content are artists and are trying to chase a music career. So I figured, you know, why not teach you guys some of the things I learned um, just during my grind. You know what I'm saying? During my come up. And I think that's kind of fair, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, so there's a lot of things that I've learned just being an artist out here. And being an independent artist specifically is one of the hardest, one of the hardest things you can ever do in your life. You know what I'm saying? Because there are so many expenses that are covered by a record label. You know, like studio time, um, tours, just a lot of different stuff that's really covered by record labels. But when you're an independent artist, that means that you literally have to do everything on your own. Yes, you can make the argument, okay, you know, I want to, I can outsource stuff to like different people and whatever. But, you know, to each their own, I'm only going to talk about what I do. You know, I'm not going to talk about what other people do. Yes, you can outsource stuff to other people, have managers, all that stuff, but like... If you're doing it all on your own, it is very difficult, and that's what I'm pretty much going to be talking about. So, one thing I do want to talk about is probably just, and I'll, I'll, I'll discuss a little bit more about it, you know, the um, just venues. Like, a lot of people out in whatever city you're in, how many people have ever been to a show, and, you know, you thought the band was great, you thought everything was cool, but for whatever reason, you didn't really know how to get booked for that venue, you know, um, it's very difficult in certain situations to get booked for specific venues, because you can argue a lot of it, you know, a lot of people would just say, like, all right, well, obviously, you need to be a talented artist, you need to have a really good resume, you need to have performed at different places, this, that, and the third, but, there's an unspoken side to that that's not really spoken about, I feel like, on YouTube, which is you have to have a reputation. You know, it's kind of weird. It's not on your resume. You think that everything is going to be paper, you know, everything that's listed on your paper. Okay, you know, you're qualified for the job. Sometimes it's not enough. And it's crazy, right? But unfortunately, that's at least how it is, you know, maybe here, but um, I don't know for anywhere else. It's not really, but like, Sometimes you just have to be known by a lot of people that are currently getting booked. You know, sometimes you do have to know somebody in order to get there sometimes, but it's not every single case, you know, that's just a certain situation, but just be prepared, you know, to spend days, months, possibly years, emailing, calling, doing all this booking stuff for people and you may be overqualified for that gig, but for whatever reason, the only reason why they're not choosing you for it is because the people that they hire don't know who you are. That's just, that's it. You know, that's kind of like the unspoken thing. You know, that's when reputation really comes into play for the music stuff. Now, obviously, there's another side to it where reputation doesn't really matter. It's really just, okay. Is this person talented? Yes, they're talented. Okay, where have they performed at? Okay, they performed at a lot of venues. Okay, they're consistently getting called. They have videos out so I can see, you know, what kind of work they put in. All right, that's cool. Now, the biggest thing right there is, are we going to make money? Because the biggest thing for restaurants, venues, anywhere, is the only reason why they're, why they're really going to want to hire somebody to perform at their establishment you know what I'm saying? Provided it's a music venue, um, is it's not just for the sole fact that someone's good. 
there's a lot of people out here that are talented artists, you know. There's a lot of talented artists in the world. But talent will only get you so far. What they really care about is how many people are going to buy drinks in my venue? How many people are going to buy, um, you know, food? Like, how much money are we going to make provided this group, this band, this act performs at our establishment? That's what really matters. So, it all really comes down to crowd draw. You know, how many people can you actually bring out to a show? And the closer to having a filled out, you know, to, the closer to having a sold out show or like a, you know, filled room, the better chances you have of, you know what I'm saying? Um, getting called back because what it really comes down to is the reason why a lot of these people get called back, especially these amazing bands is they bring a lot of people in, you know, it's just always a kind of like two things that you see with you know, each other, you know, really, really good brand, amazing turnout in terms of the crowd. The, the way that the audience, uh, the way that the booking agents think, they're basically saying, okay, well, shoot, who should we book for this um, event? Who should we book? We have, um, I don't know, the 14th available. All right, well, let's look. All right, we made a lot of money with this specific band on this day. They brought in a good crowd. People were buying drinks. People were buying food. You know what I'm saying? We made a lot of money that night. Waitresses, waiters got tipped. Yeah, let's bring them back. That's the easiest way. They're not going to be like, okay, this band was great, but then three people showed up to their place and they lost money. All right, yeah, let's book them. They're never going to say that. So my advice to artists is, at least for this section, is just think about things from the venue standpoint. I know it can be really hard to get told no's. And believe me, I've been there. You know, I am an artist myself. (laughs) But, um... Just start thinking about things from the contractor standpoint. Think about things from their point of view. You know, how do they, how do they benefit from you being in there versus you benefiting from that, you know, from them calling you to do the gig? That's probably going to take you a lot further than a lot of people, you know, because what I see is a lot of people and it's unfortunate, you know, it depends on what your goals are. Because there's nothing wrong with this, but like a lot of people get stuck in that open mic slash jam session phase where it's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm coming out. I'm going out to the city today and I'm finna jam, finna do this open mic, play three songs. You know what I'm saying? And we're good. You know, it's nice. It's a good time. And I still love open mics. I do open mics. But if your main goal is to throw your own shows consistently and probably eventually at the end of the day, get like tours, travel to different cities, perform at like bigger venues that hold thousands upon thousands of people, you're not really going to get there by just staying at open mics. You have to level up and upgrade. And the only way that you could truly level up is to understand what the people that are in position to promoting you to where you want to be, understanding how they think. If you understand that, Man, my voice is dry. I'm spending too many facts. <laughs> hey, Kevin Samuels had his wine. I got my water. <laughs> but yeah, if you understand that, you are pretty much golden. You'll be good to go. So that's one of the biggest things I tell you guys to do. Um, Let me see what else is there. Yeah, I mean... It's a lot of different things out here. Um, make sure when you're booking, a lot of people like to, yeah, I think probably the main thing I'd, I'd probably stay on topic wise for this specific live stream is just the live show aspect. You know, I think for several years I've been just grinding with the internet stuff and I did live shows, you know, I've always done it. That's my primary thing, but like just knowing that there's always room for improvement, different things that you could just do to level up from a live performance standpoint. It's it's really cool and it makes the game fun because there's always something changing up. Shout out to Layla. Shout out to you. Thanks for joining the live stream. Spitting games, spitting facts on the music industry and how to level up as an independent artist. But yeah. So I would say as far as live shows, one of the biggest things that people think about because this is summertime. A lot of people want to get onto these 
huge or even medium sized, who knows, just lack of better words, music festivals, you know, festivals in their city. Summer is the biggest time for festivals. And that's some of the, that's actually one of the best opportunities for you to grow your fan base. You know, a lot of people go out to these festivals and find artists they've never heard of and they're instantly becoming fans of them. So you definitely want to become a festival, an avid festival, festival, you know, goer and just, you know, start performing at these things. Um, what I would tell you is just a lot of these, yes, there's reputation that goes into play, but what I would tell you is don't only focus on the music festivals, also focus on just the community stuff. Like you can even go to like the suburbs, you know what I'm saying? Like they have farmers markets, they have different Things where, you know, it may not be music based. It might just be for like food or, you know, food festivals or they might be celebrating something different. You want to become like your county or your township's go to artist to call for for specific events. Like that's what you really want to do. That way you can have this resume of like all these different local events and it looks good because you're helping out your community. All these different local events that you've been a part of. That way, when you apply for the festivals, for like the music festivals, they can be like, okay, well, what else have they done? Have they done festivals before? They see all these different events that you've taken part of. And it's like, okay, you know what? I think they have a lot of experience with, you know, doing live festivals. It shouldn't be any different if they were to come on our stage. So yeah, we'll definitely hire them for this year. You know, that's, that's one of the best ways to get booked for stuff. Like I did it. It worked for me. Now I'm starting to do, I'm actually just got booked for a Dunday festival in Philly, which it's going to be our first time doing that. There's like almost 500,000 people that are going to be inside the audience. So that's actually probably going to be, I think that's the largest crowd I've ever played for. So that might actually be really cool, but um, I'm looking forward to that. But you know, a lot of these local events that I've done in my township definitely helped just give me that track record of stuff, you know? Um, so yeah, festivals, definitely make sure to do some local stuff. And with festivals, you want to make sure you apply early, early, like don't just be like, Oh, you know, this festival is happening in July for 4th of July. You know, that's a big one to look for too, as well. Like all these big holidays, you want to capitalize on that because that's where the most people will be, you know, but like, don't just be like, Oh, this festival is happening in July. Let me apply in June. I right, hit them up in like February. Like I'm serious. Hit them up in February. I promise you, if you hit them up months in advance, you will be the first person that hit them up for that whole event. They're not even planning for nothing yet, but the whole idea is, and you might be like, this is too early. Why would I do that? The whole idea is you want to be the first thing that comes to mind. So when they say, hey, yeah, we're um, we're trying to do, um, I don't know, Wild Welcome America Festival or 4th of July Festival this year. Yeah. All right. Live entertainment. Who should we think of? Well, there was that one person that, you know, hit us up mad early. You know, let's, let's, why don't, why don't we just consider them? That's going to be the first, you'll literally be the first person they check out. They're going to check out all your work first because they already have your information before all these big artists that are used to going to these festivals. So, Yeah. Just hit them up early and you'll have a really good chance of, you know, doing it. And it's not just hitting them up early. You need to follow up. Just stay consistent. Always hit them up. Hey, do you have any updates on this? Do you have any updates on that? You know, don't be overly, you know, attached to it and bug them. But like every now and then try to, you know, stay in their heads. And then you'll realize you're going to get booked for more festivals than you're not booked for, you know. So that's just one tip that I'd give you guys because I know a lot of people, whenever it's summertime, they're like, shoot, all these festivals happen. I ain't get booked for none of them, you know, and it's not easy, but that's how you play the game. It's about who wants it the more, you know, not who wants it the more. It's about who wants it the most, you know, who's willing to work harder for it. So, yeah, um, connections will only get you so far. You know, hard work helps too. But, um, I think that's that. Merch is cool too. Merch is a really good idea because when you have merch, you're not just relying on what these events pay you. And this can go for just, it's not just for festivals. It can go for your shows. It can go for private events. 
you know, like, let's say, let's say you got called to book, you know, you got called for a wedding gig, right? Um, let's say you're a singer. I don't know. You know, this is open to anyone, not just instrumentals. You could be a rapper. You could be a singer. You could be whatever. I don't care. Let's say you get called to sing for a wedding and, you know, they pay you, who knows, you know, whatever your rate is. Let's just say it's 800. I don't know. You're getting paid $800 for that. You know, $800 for, let's say they want you for 30 minutes. I think that's a pretty good, you know, rate. Um, It depends on what, obviously, different factors, but this is just a scenario. So you're getting called for an $800 gig for a wedding, playing for, or singing for 30 minutes. Now, does that mean that you have to rely on just that $800? Because obviously gas money will be involved, so it's not going to be you know, to and from, so it's not going to be $800, it's probably going to go down a bit, so how do you make the most money out of any situation that you're in, is the biggest thing, you know, um, the best way to do it is probably say, hey, am I able to get tips during the show, am I able to, you know, sell merchandise, I think merchandise is probably the easiest one, because especially if you're a singer, singers get away with almost everything, y'all have it easy, you know, I'm, I'm not one to try to sing for a wedding, at least not at this time. Um, right now, it's just too much pressure. <laughs> I'd rather stick to the saxophone, but like, let's say you got, you just finished getting out of the studio and you have new CD, little self promo right here. You know what I'm saying? Just got these literally yesterday and going to start selling them on my shows. Um, but let's say you just got a new CD. They're going to, you know, and you say, hey, you know, would I be able to sell my CDs at your wedding? Bruh. They're going to say, yes, of course, that's bragging rights for them. They have this amazing vocalist that sang at their wedding and they're selling their CDs live at their wedding. That's a huge selling point for them. You know, now at this point, you can charge whatever you feel comfortable with. Now, I mean, personally, I wouldn't charge like astronomical numbers, like in the thousands, but like you can charge, you can make your rates for that. And then let's say, I don't know, let's say you charge $10 for a CD right? Eight people buy your CD, that's $80. 80 people buy your CD, that's $800 right there. That's already matching how much you're getting paid to perform at that wedding. So you can do the math. 800 plus 800, 1600. You're getting paid a 1,600 to perform at a wedding for 30 minutes. 30 minutes. And the reason why you're doing that getting that number is because you started selling merch just like that just one thing imagine if you were to throw in t-shirts imagine if you're throwing hoodies all this different stuff people see the thing is this is really what i'm trying to get at artists these days do not know how to negotiate y'all do not know how to think like business-minded people y'all are just like yeah whatever you guys give me that's cool you know i'll just i'll deal with it that's not the mindset that you guys have to have. You guys need to know how to negotiate. You see, what I respect about photographers and videographers, photographers and videographers rarely get underpaid for specific things. People are already under the notion where like, oh shoot, you're going to get a wedding photographer? Oh man, you better have a lot of money saved up. Oh, you're getting a wedding videographer? Oh man, yo, did you save up? You better have like a thousand or something to capture your wedding? Wow. When it comes to musician... Why is it that people feel comfortable to pay a musician $50 or less to perform at a whole wedding, to perform at a banquet, to perform at a cocktail hour, like to perform at anything? It does not make any sense why someone will spend over 10 years on their craft and get paid less than $100 for however long they're performing. That does not make any sense to me. If you're cool with that pay, then, you know, all power to you, but... I personally feel like people should be compensated for the amount of time they spent on their craft and the amount of time that they spent preparing for the event along with what the event performance details entail. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be paid for how much work you're putting into what you're doing. But um, it all comes down to the negotiation. You know, you got to not just be like, oh, I'll just take the $100 gig. Just... You got to like, if you want more than a hundred dollars, you can have more than a hundred dollars. You just have to tell them, Hey, this is my rate. 
this is why my rate is my rate. You know what I'm saying? Explain it thoroughly and back it up, obviously. But and you're obviously going to get some no's. You know, I'm just saying, like, if people see a certain number, they're going to be saying no. But there will also be people that say yes. You know, closed mouths do not get fed. So my message for you guys is just learn how to negotiate. Learn how to back up why you deserve a certain rate because that's very important. You know, if you want to make a living off of your music, you're not going to make a living off of music getting paid $50 or less to perform. That's just not going to happen. So you just really need to think about that, you know. Um, there have been way too many times, and I have so many <laughs> random stories, man, of people that wanted to underpay me. Usually, this is what happens, right? You'll know... There's a lot of signs that you'll you know see when people are trying to get you to do something for free or for a low rate. They'll usually say, "Hey, you know, oh my um, I don't know, my sister is going to have this birthday party. It's supposed to be this big thing, but and we want like live entertainment, but we only want you to perform for like fifteen to twenty minutes. Like they'll give you some kind of like time estimated time thing, right? For only this amount of time. That's the biggest." Like, that's the biggest way to find out if you're not, if they're not really trying to pay you your rate before you even say anything. That's when they reach out to you. So that's a red flag. Keep that marked down. Another one is they don't ask you how much you charge. They just never say it. They just say, hey, are you available to perform at this? That's it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, I'd say... You can still respond to those emails or messages or whatever, um, but don't have high hopes of actually doing those gigs and, you know, getting paid what you want to be paid because a lot of people ain't trying to spend on music because a lot of musicians are lazy and they don't like to charge well enough, you know? If all musicians come together and they're like, yo... Shoot, let's all charge $400 for an everyday average gig. Just all of us around the world, you know, and just make that the standard. You don't know how much damage that would do. Shoot, we'd be getting paid thousands and thousands of dollars, of dollars on the regular for just different gigs. It will be so, it would be so easy. Like, I don't know, man. I might be rambling. I might be talking your brains off, but like, I do photography now, I do video for now, and surprisingly, whenever I get called for something, no one ever questions my rates. It's weird. It's like they just expect it to be a certain caliber of pay because, I don't know, they just hold it to a high degree. It's just common to spend a certain amount of money for a photographer or videographer. So, I don't know. That's just something... You know, I'd notice, um, let me know if you guys have any questions regarding like how to get booked for events or anything related to music. Cause I'm here to help, you know, it is currently 80 degrees in the Philly area. It's crazy, man. Philly's unite. That's why I got this water that I'm drinking every five seconds. 80 degrees is not fun. For sure, keep grinding. Appreciate it, Layla. Appreciate it. Yeah. No, I'm just... I don't know. Like, this This isn't technically a music business channel. I've always wanted to make one, or at least thought of it. But I like to spit facts on here sometimes, you know? I've been thinking about it, because I watch music business channels all the time. Um... And I don't think it would be hard for me to make something like that. But it's just so much that I'm doing right now with my music. That's like, I don't know if I can make a whole nother channel dedicated to this type of stuff. But maybe I will one day. Maybe I'll just make a live stream centric channel. Um, and just talk on it. Who knows? But yeah. Yeah, that's my biggest thing. Just unfair pay for artists. Um, is there anything else? Anything else that usually happens. Oh. 
yeah, regarding booking, don't be surprised to not get called for a gig or got, not get accepted for an event if you don't have any videos online at all. You know, there'll be people that are like extremely talented. I mean, like the best drummers, the best bassists, the best whatever singers, who knows, whatever they do. They'll be the best at what they do or at least regarded, you know, just as a highly skilled person of their craft. Maybe not the best in their city, but, you know, they're really good. They're professional. And they get, you know, they reach out to people and they're saying, you know, hey, I want to perform at this place. And they rely solely on their talent. And they don't get called for it. Why is that? Because here's what venues do. They say, okay, well, you know, this so-and-so wants to perform at our venue. All right, that's cool. Let's look them up online. If someone looks you up online and they can't find anything why do you think they have the right to, why do you think they should book you for their event? It makes absolutely no sense. If I'm trying to get, I don't know, let's say I'm trying to get a blender, right? I'm trying to buy a blender and someone tells me, yo, this is the best blender on the market. You need to get it. It's really good. It has all these amazing features and everything. I look up that blender online. I can't find anything. All I know how to do is just buy it. That's not going to help me. Why would I believe in that? You know, it's like you have to think of yourself as a product. How marketable are you as an artist? Are people going to see all these different reasons online that back up why they need to hire you for whatever it is you want them to do? You know, that's something that you really need to think about. Because I'll say this for me. One thing that definitely helped me out is having this YouTube channel. With my YouTube channel, I now have like well over a thousand thirty six videos. I'm pretty sure. Now, I'm not saying you have to drop a thousand plus videos, but at least have 50 videos of you performing online. Just at least something you got to have at least something on YouTube, at least something on Instagram, like something on these platforms so that when people look you up and they want to see what you do, they can actually find you doing something and don't put your phone in the most awkward corner and just have a recording, that's not going to help anything. You got to have that propped up really well in a really well lit area, you know, capture yourself in your best moment. Like you got to think the way I would approach this, right? This is the best game I could give you today. When you make content, when you make any kind of social media content, I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're just casual with it. Just know anybody and anyone, anyone can be watching you. So you got to think about it like this, right? You know how like all these big corporate companies and all this stuff, they have like these press rooms and they have like these lectures or whatever. And, you know, they have a screen, they show videos on there while they're doing their presentations. Imagine your YouTube channel or your Instagram or whatever social media platform you have is the main topic of the lecture for that big company. And this company is prepared to spend a million dollars on your work to hire you. But what will make them hire you is the quality of your work. Can you really say that your crusty looking, awkward, not well lit smartphone video of you performing with horrible audio quality would make these people with millions and millions of dollars in this corporate company want to spend on you and book you? Let's be honest. I don't even think I have to answer that one, man. Like, just make sure you have something that can be looked at as very professional. Like, I could even say, like, let's say, I don't know. I could even help you guys with this. A lot of you guys I see online, like, a lot of people say, yo, if only I could work with Drake. If only I could work with so-and-so, this A-list celebrity. If only I could do this, if someone could connect the dots. You have to really ask yourself, like, are you actually ready? And a lot of these questions, see, one thing with me is I don't hold back. I'm very straight to the point, like blunt. I give it to you how it's supposed to be. I'm not going to try to protect your feelings. I'm literally trying to give you the facts, the cold, hard effects. And no one that everyone feels comfortable talking, you know, uncomfortable talking about. So what I'm really going to tell you is. If you really want to work with these people, you need to think about it and say, hey, am I actually ready for this moment that I'm glorifying? Like, if someone, like, I don't know, 
if someone were to try to sign me today, would I have enough content? Like if someone's looking my direction, would I have enough content to actually justify those people, you know, booking me for whatever it is they want to take me for? You know, do I have good quality music that's like, okay, you know what? This person can really write. This person's an amazing songwriter. Let's put their music on our radio station. Is it really going to sound as good as everything else that's around it? Just think about it, you know. A lot of people want to make it. A lot of people want to blow up. A lot of people want to go viral and everything. But they're not truly ready for that moment, you know. I think I could use myself for this. Back in 2018, 2018, I always tell you guys, 2018 was one of my best moments on YouTube, you know. I was grinding. I was literally doing everything possible to try to go viral. I would actually go on the news several times. I get on the news like every couple times on the, you know, in Philly, like a couple of times a month, really. You'd see me on Eyewitness News. You'd see me on NBC 10 News with my saxophone. I'm just out there playing. And, um, you know, a lot of cool stuff happened and I met a lot of crazy people, but like, not once did I truly go viral, even though I put all that work in. And it's because I was I was working hard, but not smart. I didn't really know how to get to where I wanted to be. I just knew that I needed to work hard to get there. But it wasn't until recently, I'd say maybe like 2019, where I adjusted everything and I started saying, okay, well, shoot, let me spend more time on my brand, build my brand, let me work on my marketing and let me, you know, build my name up so I can have a bigger name, not just in Philly, but worldwide. And I started pushing my YouTube channel a lot more. I started doing covers from specific artists. And then lo and behold, I started getting co- um, shouted out by DG. DDG, yeah. You know, um, DJ Khaled, Snoop Dogg. Start, you know, I get featured on Facebook. All these different things. The Facebook one, that's probably the biggest viewed video. And it's not my video specifically, but... That video has millions and millions of views worldwide. 24K, 24K Golden was, you know, mentioned for that. That's a, I have a video on that. Um, Kiki Palmer was in the video. David Dobrik was in the video. Like, none of that stuff would have happened if I didn't have a clear-cut plan, you know. So, what I'm basically trying to tell you is, I know a lot of you guys want to be viral. A lot of you guys want to have this huge successful life as an independent recording artist or whatever you want to be. But you need to make sure you have your house in order. You need to make sure you have everything you need. The structure is there so that when you get your moment, it doesn't fade away and you're a one hit wonder. You know, you got to make sure you're good to go and you can sustain the momentum. Um, And it's not easy. None of this stuff I'm talking about is easy. You know, I could be like, oh, you just need 50 videos. 50 videos is a lot of hard work, especially if you want them to all be quality. It's a lot of hard work. You know, it's not going to take you that, like, a short amount of time to get that. But you have to be in it for the long haul. And the worst thing you could do is just waste your time. But if you know what you're doing and you're doing it the right way, nothing's going to be a waste of time. And I promise you, if you put out the right content... With the right energy, you're gonna get. Be, you're gonna start getting a lot more calls, a lot more calls. You're gonna be able to comfortably raise your prices without anybody complaining, because everything will be justified. You've done the work to justify it, you know. Um. Yeah, I don't know, man. I want y'all to get paid. <laughs> I mean, is that so wrong? I want y'all to get paid, but um, you know, and it's not all about the money either. It's about the personal connections that you make with people too. You know, I could go in on just the people that go to your shows, how to actually be more of like, I don't know how to put it, like a good Samaritan, just someone that's more down to earth. Like it's very, artists have a stigma of always being, acting Hollywood, you know, and acting like they're above everybody else that's around them. But you can, if that's a trait that you actually do have, it's never too late to, to fix that, you know, and a simple way to fix it is to have a genuine conversation with somebody that you don't know too well that does enjoy your music. 
And that could be at a live show. That could be, I don't know, let's say, let's say, yeah, let's say you had your first show. You know, you finally got good booked. You finally got that call. And, you know, if you did a really good job, what you usually notice is some people will be coming up to you after your show and be like, hey, you know, so-and-so, um, you really, you know, I really enjoyed your show. You know, that song really touched me. I really en- enjoyed the story that you said, you know, all that stuff, you know. You should ask them like, hey, you know, tell them, hey, you know, I really appreciate everything. I really appreciate you coming out to my show. It means a lot to me. How'd you find out about the event? Okay, you know, where'd you come from? You know, ask them about their travel to to and from the show, like how their week's been. Like, that's how you show people that you really care. I guarantee you, you do that, they're going to come, they're going to be more likely to come to your next show. Not just that, they will bring everybody that they know and be like, yo, this guy, this girl, she is down to earth, he is down to earth, you know, they really talk to me and they just seem like a really level-headed person, down to earth, really kind, you know, amazing music. You definitely have to come see this person perform. They'll start coming in, telling their friends and everything. Already, you have a really strong community. Shout out to Man Cobley. Appreciate you. Give up the great work. Thank you. You do the same. I appreciate all your support. But yeah, I mean... A lot of artists, I just see it every time when I'm at a concert, like, cats will literally play their hearts out on the stage, but they are so disconnected from the audience. You know, they're literally playing to each other, but they're not actually thinking about the audience. That is such a huge disconnect. Um, I would just say, like, keep the audience in mind, speak to them. And, you know, that's how you should grind, you know, just be mindful of who's around you and who's really supporting you. Um, but yeah, man. I may actually need to make another channel for this type of content. I didn't think I had that much to say. Because people have been telling me for years, yo, Akashi, like, you need to tell people how to really start this whole music journey because you've done it, you know, you've gone to a certain point in your career where you're, you're basically allowed to talk to people and tell them like how to get to a certain point, you know, and it's true, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of stuff. I've experienced a lot of stuff at this point. Like I could definitely, I'm not going to be telling you how to get, how to become an A-list celebrity because obviously I'm not A-list, but you know what I'm saying? I'm touring, I'm doing cool stuff. I'm about to be in Cali soon. Um, I'll talk about it in the vlog, but uh, you know, a lot of people want to, a lot of people are stuck at square one. They've practiced their instrument. They've practiced their craft, whatever they do, but they're not really sure how to get out there. And that I could definitely help people out with. So if you want me to make another YouTube channel where I do more talks like this and actually help you guys become like successful artists and make more money with your music. Let me know and, you know, let me know in the comments because I could definitely, I could definitely do something, you know, whenever I'm free because, you know, I, I record music. I got this CD right here, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, stream the City Dreams EP, but yeah, um, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about today. Um, I want to give a, do a giveaway for anybody who joined this live stream. So if you made it to this point. You guys are leaving with a free gift. I am giving you guys a free copy of my new single, City Dreams. Click the pinned link in this uh, live stream. And it'll take you right to my song, City Dreams. You'll get a free download. I just want to thank all of you guys for all these years of support. I know I haven't done a special for the 3,000 subscribers special or, you know, the fact that we just hit, we just exceeded 1,000 vid- videos on this channel. You know, it's a lot of stuff that happened and I've just been busy these months, you know, just trying to learn for myself the business steps that I need to take at this stage that I'm in, you know, for my career. But I just want to thank you guys for all your support. It really means a lot that you guys come to my shows, you guys watch my videos, you guys comments on here and you guys just give me genuine comments of encouragement. You know, that stuff allows me to, it lets me know that I should continue making YouTube videos because a lot of artists in Philly do not do YouTube. 
I'm literally like the only guy out here that's taking YouTube seriously in the music community here. So I think, yeah, I want to do this more often. But yeah, let me know if you want to make if you want me to make that other channel. Subscribe to my reaction channel. I've been dropping a lot of videos. There are a lot of bangers. It's Ikechi Reacts. I'll probably just type it into the chat right now before I forget. Um, subscribe to my reaction channel. Ikechi Reacts. Yeah. If you guys check that out. Um, I post almost daily reactions. I'm trying to get back into it. We react to Dirty Loops. We react to Snarky Puppy. A lot of the people in Sago. So, yeah, we're doing it big. But I think that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys like this video, please make sure to like, comment, share. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Look out for my vlog. I'm not sure if I'm going to drop it tomorrow. This is going to be my longest vlog on this channel. Two hours long, South Jazz Club, you catch you in Yenica with the Dollar Sings live in Philadelphia. Amazing, amazing concert. We killed it. First sold out show in my whole career, sold out both sets. So definitely check it out. I think I might drop it tomorrow. I'm not sure. Uh, let me know if I should drop it tomorrow. But it's coming soon. So click on the notification bell icon so you never miss a video from my channel. Um, follow me on Spotify. Spotify, SoundCloud, check out my music, check out my EP. If you guys want to get this City Dreams EP, you know what I'm saying? Um, you're going to have to come to a show like in person. It's not online at this time. But yeah, that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. I'm going to let you guys hear the song you guys are getting for free, City Dreams. So let me put that joint on. It is hot here in Philly, man. Can't do this. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here you guys go. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.